الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتل ما أوحي إليك من الكتاب وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace, mercy, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you, my brothers and sisters. I hope that you are keeping good this evening and enjoying this wonderful uh, weather outside. I hope it's raining by your side, but this side is raining a little bit, it's drizzling. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbul Alameen, Ya Allah, make this re rain a reason of the blessings and the barakat uh, for all of us. Ya Rabbul Samawati Wal Ard. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so 21st Jews of the Holy Quran. It begins by the command to convey the message, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to convey the message uh, of Islam, to convey the message of the oneness of Allah, to convey the message to recite the Quran and as well as to, to and as well as to pray, to pray to in the presence of one true God. So we are talking about the 21st Jews of the Holy Quran and Surah Al-Ankabut continues which is the 29th chapter of the Holy Quran and I'm quoting 40, uh, verse 44 from 29th uh, chapter of the Holy Quran. Alhamdulillah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the prayer and Allah says that that aqim is salah Allah, Allah asks in, in Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that establish the prayer. Why to establish the prayer? Because inna salata Tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. So Allah basically gives us the, the, the reasons uh, or benefits uh, or, or the purpose of establishing the prayer or, or what prayer can uh, does with us, what prayer can and how prayer can benefit us in this dunya and as well as in the life of the hereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that inna salata tanha, that indeed salat protects you, it, it, it forbids you from what? From two things. One is fahsha, shameful actions, any shameful action, and wal munkar, and all the evil deeds, all the evil deeds. And subhanallah, wala dhikrullahi akbar, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the remembering of Allah is greater. The remembering of Allah is always greater. So whenever you will remember Allah, Allah will make you great in this dunya, and as well as in the life of the hereafter. So when you will offer the salat, this salat will protect you from all the shameful actions, from the minor action from the minor sins and from the major sins as well once we are doing the justice with the salat and once your salat is just a formality is just an exercise so we're not gaining anything we're not achieving anything from our salat but remember one thing when your salat is proper is 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 is, is beautiful and is, is strong and is healthy when i say healthy means that you are doing doing the justice with the salat you're making the wuzu properly and um, Whatever you're reciting in the Salat, you are reciting with concentration, with contemplation. You're taking your time. Your Salat is not like a just chicken pick. Your sujood is not like a chicken pick and fast, fast. You're just hitting your head on the ground and that's it. No. Once your Salat is proper, believe me, Salat is the shield. Salat is something that which can really protect you from all the shameful action, from all the shameful deeds. And Salat will guide you, your heart, throughout uh, every single aspect of your life, every single walk of your life. That is why Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Qurratu Aini fi Salat, that the coolness of the my coolness of my eyes are placed in the salah. It comforts me when I offer the salah. It it brings the coolness to my eyes when I when I when I, when I perform the salah. Subhanallah. So let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Rabbul Alameen help us to offer our salat in a proper way. And then uh, Imam Ibn Kasir mentions uh, that th there are, you know, prayer has three attributes, Salat has three attributes, any kind of the prayer has three attributes, three characteristics. 
And, um, and then he says that any prayer that contains none of these attributes, none of these attributes is not truly prayer, is not truly prayer. What is the first attribute of the prayer? He says, being done purely and sincerely for Allah. That is the first attribute, that is the first characteristic of the prayer, subhanAllah. This, this, that, that must be done for Allah, that not must be done for anybody else. Uh, for the sake of the gain or for the sake of respect or honor. So sorry, mosquito just biting me, so I have to keep, you know, uh, uh, protecting myself. So, so the first attribute of the Salat is being done purely and sincerely for Allah alone, which is called ikhlas. And the second is, second attribute of the Salat is fear of Allah. When you when you're offering the salat, when you're doing any action, there must be fear in your heart, in your mind. And the third is remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And then afterwards, in the same juz, uh, in the same chapter as well, chapter 29, verse 64, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us that how insignificant this dunya is, eh? how insignificant this world is. Look how Allah is explaining, and we sometimes we give our life to gain everything in this dunya, in this world. We we sometimes to try to make our uh, you know living proper and and luxury and comfortable we sometimes don't even distinguish what is right and wrong what is halal and haram what is lawful and unlawful we just do all kind of madness all kind of uh, wrong things and wrong actions for this dunya for this worldly life and look how allah is explaining this insignificant dunya he says, وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهُ وَلَعِبْ وَلَا دَارُ الْآخِرَةِ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَبُونَ That and this life of this world is only an amusement and the play. Verily the home of the hereafter, that is the life indeed. That is the home indeed. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And this is something very important. And you know, I just want to mention one of the narration of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he said that narrated by Hazrat Jabir bin Abdullah reported that Allah's apostles, you know, once he was happened to walk uh, through the bazaar uh, coming from the side and he saw uh, a dead lamb, he saw a dead lamb on the street, uh, the, the lamb with the short, very short ears and he took hold of his ear and said, you know, the dead lamb was there and the, plus there was a, uh, you know, uh, defects in the lamb as well when it comes to his uh, ears. And uh, so Allah, Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he hold the lamb with the, with the ear and then he asked to his sahaba, he asked to his companion that uh, who amongst you would like to have this for a dirham? Means that who amongst you want to purchase this for one dollar, you know? And then they said, we do not like to have it even if it is less than a dollar, even if it is less than a dirham. Means that what we will do with this? And then Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what if I sell this, you know, for you free? So Nabi Kareem, they said that no, we're going to not buy it because it has no any use for us. Even if this lamb was alive, we would have not buy it. You know why? Because this lamb is already defected. It has the defects in it. It has the faults in it. We would prefer to buy something else which has no any faults. And then subhanAllah, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa smiled on this. And then he says, by Allah, by Allah, this world is more insignificant in the eye of Allah, then this lamb to you, then this lamb in your eyes, then this dead lamb is in your eyes. Subhanallah. This world is more insignificant in the presence of Allah, then this dead lamb is in your eyes. So it shows that how, how the, the value of this dunya is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why the best home is the life of the hereafter and that is what we have to prepare ourselves and that is what we are in this month of Ramadan, keeping the fast, giving the sadqah, zakat and charity. And uh, you know, looking for the night of the power, looking for the night of decree, alhamdulillah. So these are the things that can really benefit us, my brothers and sisters, in the life of the hereafter, inshallah, Aziz. Okay, quickly. And then afterwards, you know, Allah talks about, then Surah Al-Rum begins, which is the uh, 30th chapter of the Holy Quran, which was revealed in Makkah. Surah Al-Rum is about, uh, actually Surah Al-Rum is a very interesting chapter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, two uh, superpowers. Uh, Romans and Persians and subhanallah what is interesting in this chapter that Allah makes mention one of the greatest prediction via Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa he literally predicts with the command of Allah that you know Romans they're going to have the defeat but later on within the within the duration of three to nine years once again 
they're going to have the upper hand, Romans. Uh, they're going to defeat the Persians. This was the prediction of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, commanded and instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is in the Holy Quran. What happened actually Romans and the Persians they had a you know a fight from one of the longest fight uh, in the history of the world actually for 700 years for 700 there was a fight actually between both of them there was a huge collapse and battle was continuing it and uh, you know eventually uh, Romans were defeated and they, they, they had a they, they, they were facing the decline when these verses were revealing and at that very moment, you know, when nobody could have ever imagined that Romans can have the upper hand after three years and nine years, Quran mentions that sooner or later Romans, Romans, they are going to, you know, defeat the Persians. And Romans, they were, they were actually the people of Christianity. They were the people of the book, uh, you know, and the Persians, uh, they, were the, they were the Zoroastrians. So that is why, you know, the believers, you know, the Muslims in the time of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were in the support of Romans, but not in the support of uh, Persians, because definitely they were the Zoroastrians and the uh, Quraysh, the, the disbelievers, the pagans, the idol worshippers, they were always supporting the Persians. So subhanAllah, so when these verses reveal, Alif Lam Mim Ghulibatir Rum Fi Adan Al Ard, Wahum Mim Baadi Ghalabihim Sayyaglibun. SubhanAllah. And, uh, you know, soon when Al Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make mentions of this, that, okay, sooner or later, uh, Romans going to have the upper hand. And this is what ha exactly happened within the duration of eight years. Eight years, you know, Romans, once again, they defeated that superpower, which was the Persia, uh, Persian. And they, they defeated it totally. And they, you know, finished them from, the, from, uh, from, from at that time. And uh, nobody could have thought that this could be possible. And subhanAllah, this is one of the greatest miracle of the Holy Quran and miracle of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, Quran didn't mention that Romans, Romans will have the uh, you know, victory sooner or later. No, Quran with that also mentions the time. Quran gave us, gave us that uh, time slot that within three to nine years, Romans once again, they will defeat the uh, Persians. And subhanAllah, this is what exactly happened. And, uh, you know, and this is what... You know, it is also the response to the people, those who, those who believe that Quran is not the, uh, they say that Quran is the book of Muhammad, actually. They say that Quran is the book which was made up by the Muhammad, by the Muhammad, and it is not revealed by the, by the, by, 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 by the God, Almighty God. So, you know, if the Quran was from him, if the Quran was, was from Muhammad and not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so why he would have put the entire message at risk by by you know by by making this huge and massive uh, prediction that the romans will have the you know upper hand on the on the persians so this also proves that quran is not something which was made up by muhammad it was the it is the book of god which was revealed on muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and um, and then afterwards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in chapter 30 verse 20 among the signs of allah and then chapter 30 verse 30 allah talks about the command to adhere uh, to tawhid and then chapter 30, verse 38, Allah talks about the command to uphold the ties of the kinship and the prohibition of riba. And then, you know, chapter 30, verse 43, Allah talks about the command to follow the straight path before the day of resurrection. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, Luqman -e Hakim, uh, Luqman, the wise, wise Luqman. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنْ اشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Allah talks about Luqman. Now, who was the Luqman? Majority of the scholars, they mentioned that Luqman, he was one of the pious and the righteous and one of the most wise person at his time. He was everything except the Prophet. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really admired his, his wisdom. Allah really admired his hikmat and he makes mention of his wisdom in the Holy Quran. And um, once, uh, you know, just want to mention one thing very interesting concerning to Luqman Hakim. The, who, whose name is mentioned in the Holy Quran and the, the matter of fact the entire chapter is after him Surah Al-Luqman which is the 31st chapter of the Holy Quran you know Luqman basically he was the slave he was the servant and um, what, what happened once uh, his master said to him that slaughter this sheep for us slaughter this sheep for us so he slaughtered it and his master said to him that bring the best two pieces from it bring the best two, two pieces from this sheep that you are going to slaughter and when he slaughtered, so he brought uh, two best pieces from that sheep, and that was uh, one of one of them was uh, um, uh, you know heart, and the second was the the tongue. And then after one month, 
once again his master asked him slaughter the sheep once again and he slaughtered it and master asked him okay now bring again once again bring uh, the two best pieces from from this sheep and once again he brought the same same thing you know uh, so sorry uh, he this time he asked him that bring two worst pieces two worst pieces from 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 uh, you know uh, from from the, from this uh, sheep and this time he brought the same tongue and the heart and the master asked him that when i asked you to bring the two best pieces two best pieces and you brought tongue and the heart and when i asked you to bring two worst pieces and you brought the same tongue and the heart what is the reason behind it lokman said that there is nothing better than these if they are good there is nothing better than these two if they are good means the tongue and the heart if these two are good they they are the better they are the one of the best thing and there is nothing worse than these if they are bad tongue and the heart and this is what nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there is a flesh in your body if that sound good the entire body will sound good and if that will not sound good the entire body will not sound good and that is the that is the heart so you see so that is why he was known as uh, as luqman e hakim and he gave uh, 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 advices to his son and those advices we are familiar and we always uh, talk about it like for example he said to his son that ya bunayya la tushrik billah that oh my son never ever associate any partner with allah subhanahu wa taala and then he makes mentions about being dutiful being mindful to your parents and then he mentions that ya bunayya innaha in takum mithqal habbati min khardal that oh my son if it be anything equal to the weight of a grain of mustard seed allah will bring it forth for you although it is it is hidden under the rocks or under the mountain if you did something good action or bad deed on the day of judgment allah will bring it forth allah will show it on the day of judgment so never ever think that this is a very small action and it is it can be hidden from the eyes of allah no nothing can be hidden from the eyes of allah allah will bring it forth faman ya'mal mithqala dharratin khayran yara wa man ya'mal mithqala dharratin sharran yara and then he says ya bunayya aqim as-salat ya o oh my son perform the salat wa amur bil ma'ruf wa nahyan anil munkar and enjoin what is good and forbid what is bad wasbir ala ma asabak and always bear with patience whatever befalls you if you facing any difficulties in your life be patient and be steadfast don't complain don't object and then wala tusa'id khaddaka lin nasi and turn not your face away from men with pride nor walk uh, with, with pride through the earth verily allah likes not any arrogant uh, boaster and then he also mentioned that in uh, that uh, and be more moderate in your walking and lower your voice verily the harsh it uh, lower your voices and then subhanallah uh, so these are the few advices that i i thought i should mention from surah al-luqman um surah al-luqman and uh, we ask allah subhanahu wa chapter chapter 31 verse 12 you can check it by yourself as well chapter 31 verse 12 and um, it is also mentioned by nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam that luqman the wise used to say that in allah ida is a staud is is a stauda shay'an hafizahu that when something is entrusted to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when something is entrusted to the care of allah he protects it he always protects it you need to entrust it and then the remaining is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah will protect it for sure okay so these are the few things that i thought i should mention with you inshallah we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us uh, to to understand the teachings of quran the verses of the holy quran and enrich us with the blessings of the month of ramadan and as well as the blessings of the quran as well inshallah so please raise your hands and make the special dua amin alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wala qibatu lil muttaqin was salatu was salam wala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak ta rabbana wa ta'ali ta yadul jalali wal ikram allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik rabbi ighfir warham wa anta khairur rahimin ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين يا رب السماوات والارض يا رب العرش الكريم يا الله فورغيف اور ماينر اند ميجر سينس يا رب السماوات والارض يا الله ريموف اور سيكنسز اور ديزيزز اور ديفيكولتيز يا الله ميك ات ايزي فور اول اوف اس ان ذس دنيا اند از ويل از ان ذا لايف اوف ذا هير افتر يا الله جرانت اس كومفورت اند بيس ان ذس دنيا اند از ويل از ان ذا لايف اوف ذا هير افتر يا الله اوبن اور هارت اوبن اور تشست فور ذا قران يا رب العالمين فور ذا انديرستاندينج اوف ذا هولي قران يا الله يا رب السماوات والارض يا الله grant us long life with iman with faith with good actions with good deeds ya allah accept our fasting ya allah accept our sadaqa zakat ya allah accept our salatu tarawih ya allah accept our recitation of the holy quran reward us for every single letter of the holy quran make the dua in your heart sab ki bakhsh farma de allah sab se sawar kar ibadat kar
Oui, bon, je sais وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه ونور أرشه وزينة فرشه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. so إن شاء الله we have one minute few seconds to break the fast إن شاء الله جزاك الله for your duas for your prayers for your supplication all those who wished me uh, good things for for my life and for my birthday we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala I ask Allah ya Rabbul alamin may Allah answer all of your duas in my favors and Allah may Allah subhanahu wa taala answer answer all of my duas in your favor as well inshallah Aziz. may Allah reward you immensely and uh, jazakallah for your wonderful feedback I personally enjoy uh, these sessions actually this is one of the uh, you know me memorable actually um, month, uh, Ramadan for all of us and I was thinking that this Ramadan will be very, you know, easy for me, like I will be spending time at home, but in this Ramadan, I'm more busy than any other Ramadan. But Alhamdulillah, everything happens for the good reason. So it is a time to, uh, to break the fast, inshallah. Say this dua after me. Allahumma, inni laka sumtu wa bika amantu wa alayka tawakkaltu wa ala rizqika Aftartu. Bismillah. Go ahead. Break your fast. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.